Good morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now what have I got for you lovely lot today? Well, we've only just got back from our watercolour painting trip over to Portugal where we had a fabulous time. So I'm hoping to do a tutorial on the trip in a couple of weeks time, so look out for that. But today we've got another autumn scene and it's a lovely scene of a narrow boat by a river. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. So today's subject I've taken from a tutorial I did several years ago in Leisure Painter magazine of an old narrow boat, which I've always liked, but I thought we could redo it, but this time with autumn colours. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Winsor Newton Professional. It's cold press, 100% cotton, and it's on a block so it won't need stretching, but of course any decent watercolour paper will do. My colours are my three primaries, cadmium yellow, cobalt blue and alizarin crimson, and any bright orange and any warm red. Some burnt umber, sap green and a touch of Payne's grey. Four brushes from my range, a three quarter inch flat, number 12 and a number six round, and of course my trusty number three rigger. And here is my pencil sketch and this as usual is free of charge to download from my website, link in the description below. Off we go and wetting all this upper half with clean water using my flat brush. Now, all my greens as normal are mixes from Cadmium Yellow and Cobalt Blue. And this one is a very yellow base mix, but adding in more blue as I go. And I'm deliberately keeping a nice sense of light here in the middle. Then dropping in wet in wet all these lovely autumn colors and as always letting the paint mix and blend on the paper. Here I'm just dabbing out with a tissue a few light areas. Now with this path I'm keeping it very light towards the bridge and increasing the value here in the foreground. bit of table salt here, just a few granules and only in the foreground. And this should create a lovely motley effect. Yeah. 
So I've just added a touch of cobalt blue into the burnt umber for the bridge. Nice and wet and I also want to soften some of the edges with clean water so it merges into the trees either side. Next, lifting out with a damp brush to create a few lighter stone textures. So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break. And as I've got a bit of a cold day, it's gonna have to be some hot honey and lemon, and maybe with just a touch of whiskey thrown in for good measure. So a little bit about narrow boats. Now it's estimated that there are nearly 16,000 people in the UK who permanently live in them. Now, because permanent moorings can be quite expensive, many will continuously cruise as you will need to move at least once every 14 days. Now, sounds a great life to me, especially as there's a network of about 4,700 navigatable canals and rivers in the UK. Anyway, most of these boats are painted in bright primary colors, often with wonderful artworks along the hull. So please feel free to paint these in any colors you like. While the hull is still wet, I'm dropping some very dark value Payne's Grey for the shadows and left side of the hull. When that's dry, I'm using the lifting out technique to create these highlights. And then adding in a watery blue to reduce the contrast slightly. So just continuing to build up the washes using all the same colors lot of wet in wet washes and using all the techniques that we've already learned. And a bit of clean water spray keeps things moving, but be careful you don't totally saturate the paper. So 
So for the shadows on the grass bank, remember shadows aren't always grey, but simply a darker version of the colour underneath. So I'm leaving a gap for the brown shadow across the path, which I'll paint later. Always love a bit of splattering. It's the randomness that you get, which you just can't achieve any other way. And I'm always looking for strong contrast, using this dark shadow here to bring out the shape of the bank below. for some lovely red autumn leaves. Well, you might have spotted the girly bracelet that I'm wearing. Well, it's really the Costa Festival security band from our trip to Portugal, and I quite like it, so I just might keep it a while. Now, the good thing about using a round brush, whether it's a number 12 like this one or a smaller size, you can use the point to get these fairly accurate leaf shapes but always trying to paint with some quick, short strokes. Again with this tree, trying to get all the colours to mix and blend on the paper. Okay, now with my number six brush and a really strong deep value for the shadow under the bridge.
Details here on the bridge. As always, less is more. Don't be tempted to paint in every stone. It's all suggestive detail. Here I'm just taking a damp tissue and softening some of that texture in the path. It just looks a little bit obvious. And blending the sides of the bridge here into the trees. And let's get some more dark texture in the path with some splatting, but only here in the foreground. about some orange to suggest some falling leaves. And then adding a few little shadows here and there. And here I'm connecting the shadow on the path with some watery burnt umber. And this looks so much more natural than painting a grey to create the full shadow across the bank and path. Now for the branches, and it's really important you don't overwork the stage, leave lots of gaps as we want to give the impression that some of the leaves are in front. Nice and quick using my number six brush. Next, with my trusty number three rigger, the perfect brush for these spindly small branches. So let's finish the details on the boat.
mixed media time and this is a beige coloured pastel pencil just for a few little highlights. And now for a white. Now I'm often asked in the comments below which brand do I use and I always list down below. Right, so now for the fun. And I always leave the reflections to last because it's important you know what exactly there is to reflect. So, lots of clean water first, and then using all the previous colors, try and match roughly to the colors and values above. And I tilt my board to an angle of about 45 degrees and let the colors move and blend vertically down. Now, you must let this dry before painting in these final details.
And here some final highlights with a pastel pencil. about three hours. You know, I could quite happily live on that boat. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Make it your own, put all your own colours in and just have fun. And I promise to shout out to all the painters over there at the lodge at Sherwood Village. Hi there. And as always, please don't forget to like, Subscribe if you haven't already, it is free. Leave a comment, I do read every single one, although I can't always reply to them all. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. So take care everyone, bye for now.